What's going on and welcome into Pels and Whistles presented by Bet Online right here on the Believe Network. I'm Daniel Salerson alongside Rel Byers. Another week for the Pelicans and just like last week, a very important week for them. Two games at home and then they hit a four game West Coast trip. Uh, but unfortunately, at least for our standards here, not a great weekend in Houston. Losing on Friday night, winning on Sunday and Rel was there to witness both games. And, and Rel, would you say it's a disappointing week uh, weekend in Houston with you splitting uh, the games against the Rockets? Yeah, the split's definitely a disappointment. Um, you know, we showed up and we were loud and proud and supporting the team and everything. And um, there is no reason the game should have even been that close for that last couple of plays to even happen the way that they did. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, uh, it was pretty embarrassing. For that to to happen that way but um you know thankfully they got the next win but overall um i i'm disappointed yeah yeah i, I am too 114 to 112 on friday night they uh a 22 0 run by the rockets in the first half um got them back into the ball game and again pelicans looked like they were going to walk away with a win friday and houston had other plans and then they played a lot better on sunday winning 117 to 107 so you if you lost on Sunday, uh, I don't know how this fan base would have reacted um, because it was pretty bad on Friday and rightfully so. Um, but how was your experience uh, going to the Toyota Center for both games in Houston? You said there was a pretty decent amount of Pels fans. What did you take away from the weekend? Yeah, there was a there was a ton of Pels fans there. And I think um, it, it was pretty empty overall. And I think it's just a mixture of, you know, how Houston's doing this season, but also um this past weekend was the last weekend of the rodeo. And the rodeo is a huge deal in Houston. Um, so I don't really see why many people would forego the rodeo to go to see the, the Rockets play the Pelicans, who are also pretty much at the bottom of the standings, too. <laughs> so right. it was pretty empty. So that made it much easier for the, you know, 40 or so Pelicans fans that were in there to be extremely loud. Um, and so, yeah, in addition to the people that were there, you know, with me, with my group, uh, we ran into a, a pretty decent amount of other Pelicans fans. But um, overall, Toyota Center um, facility is pretty cool. Their club seats are way more, like, roomy and um, spacious and more comfortable than ours are. Um, so I'm a little bit jealous of that. Um, tonight I'm just going to be sitting back in my regular seat up on my perch on the balcony, mm -hmm. and it's not going to be as comfy as Toyota Center, sadly. <laughs> Gotcha. Well, yeah, I'm surprised that they actually play home games during the rodeo. I know in San Antonio, mm -hmm. they leave for their rodeo road trip. And it's kind of like in New Orleans where Mardi Gras, the Pelicans get away yeah. because that's the focus. I'm surprised that they don't still try to get Houston away so that all the attention goes on the rodeo and then goes back to the team. But yeah. that's not our problem as we have nope. plenty of ours. <laughs> um, I don't think you got to bet this weekend, though, with bet online. No, did you? I was on Thursday. I was able to put in a bet for Friday because I left on Thursday night. So before I yeah. left to put in a bet for Friday, but I don't think uh, I, I never tried a bet so far ahead. I don't even know if I can, um, you know, three days ahead of the game. So um, I wasn't able to put in anything for um, for Sunday. But I, funny enough, on Thursday, I bet on Friday's game and I bet a dollar for Houston to win. And lo and behold, they won. Just straight up? You bet them a dollar? Just, just, just straight up a dollar. Houston money line, and they won. <laughs> this is getting to be a scary trend here, Rel. Um, but Bet Online remains your number one source for all your college basketball betting this season. March Madness is here. Get analysis of every play, prop, and point at Bet Online. The latest odds are available bracket contests, team matchups, and game trends at Bet Online. Updated odds for everything from live games right through the Final Four and Championship game. Bet Online is your college basketball headquarters this season. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to sign up and receive your 50% off welcome bonus on your first deposit. Be sure to use the promo code BELIEVE, B L E A V, to receive your bonus. BetOnline.ag, where the game starts. I know you real quickly picked Duke last week and they fell by the <laughs> wayside. My champion and runner up are still in. I had a great first day. I got 13 of the 16 right, picked firm in the B Virginia. I'm like, all right, I'm looking good. <laughs> and then I don't think I had 13 correct the rest of the weekend. Uh, the rest of my bracket just dissolved rather quickly like everyone else's not that anyone mm -hmm. cares but uh it's been fun to kind of see all the upsets and like a team like princeton with a with going to the sweet 16 fairly dickinson uh upsetting the number one seed mm -hmm. in purdue um that was certainly fun at least to distract me from everything going on with the pelicans <laughs> over the weekend so but this is a 
This is a very important week, Rel, as we're getting closer yeah. and closer to the end of the season. And you look at the standings right now for New Orleans. They are in 12th still. They're a half game back of L.A. for 11th. Same in the loss column, but just one less win. And then Utah getting a big win over Sacramento last night. They are in 10th, one game ahead of New Orleans. But again, mm-hmm. just one loss separates 12th through 7th, actually 6th if you include Golden State, who's at 37-36. Mm-hmm. So when it comes to this week's schedule, tonight you have San Antonio. Thursday you have Charlotte. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. You have to win these two games. Yeah. If you lose one of these, don't even think about playing or playoffs or making it far. You have yeah. to win these two games. You wouldn't be in such a tough spot had you beat Houston on Friday. You wouldn't be in such a tough spot had you not lost 10 straight games. Right. So now it's like you can't really afford to to drop any of these games. And even though we have this allegedly super easy schedule, once we're done with these guys this week, then we go what? Out on the West Coast where we don't even play good on the road to begin with. So, um, again, mathematically, <laughs> they're still in it. But um, it's not looking too hot. So uh, we'll see what happens. But either way, you know, I'll be watching. Yeah, four-game West Coast trip after Thursday. It starts Saturday against the Clippers, who are fighting for seeding. Mm-hmm. Then the Trailblazers, who are are pretty much now, I think, have kind of withdrew their name from consideration <laughs> from the play-in <laughs> at 31 and 40. They respectfully declined a chance to play in. <laughs> uh, then Golden State, who of course is fighting for seeding, and they don't lose at home. And then a back, not the backpack, and then Thursday against Denver to end um, the tough west coast trip so like maybe it. portland's the easiest one but so is yeah. houston so you can't even go in there and go all right that's a win yeah uh but you, you just... know what how how on earth do the pelicans sit up there and lose to the lakers the way they did and then still come out friday and lose to to the rockets like how do you get spanked like that on your home court and then you go and play one of the worst teams in the league and you let them go on a 22 nothing run on you. Like, and, and there was a couple times, you know, the Pelicans were up by 10 or whatever have you, but you still let them come back and you still let them get up by however many points. And it's just like, how do you not respond? It's insane. And it's and they, they know what's at stake. So what's what's the deal? Is it a mental thing? <laughs> do, you, do you know what's crazy? And I was kind of discussing this with someone else. How much do they miss Jose Alvarado and just his energy on the court? Seriously, yeah. And it's crazy to think that you have to rely on your backup point guard to provide that spark. But when he comes Mm -hmm. in, it's a whole different ball game for this team. And and you don't have him. I just think the bench has not stepped up in a way. Um, And Yanagi had a pretty decent game on Sunday. He had Mm -hmm. that nice steal and then the three at the buzzer against Houston. Um, But if you look at the bench production, I mean, Willie had to play all of his starters over 33 minutes on Sunday to get the 10-point win. Uh, Ingram with 39 minutes, McCollum 39, Murphy 38, and then Valanciunas and Herb Jones 33. But your bench, Josh Richardson, six points, Najee Marshall, seven, Larry Nance, two, which I don't think he's fully healthy yet trying to get back um, his kind of his legs back underneath him. Dyson Mm -hmm. Daniels only played nine minutes. Um, Kyrie, Kyra Lewis, not even playing at all. You don't (laughs) have Jose. Of course, you don't have Zion. But how much is this team missing Jose Alvarado right now? A ton, especially on Friday when Dyson looked like who did it and ran. <laughs> he yeah. looked terrible on Friday. Like, happy birthday to you, my guy. But uh, you got to show up. I, I want to say he played four minutes on Friday. And I think, what, nine, you said, uh, on Sunday? Yeah, nine Not on Sunday. Lot. Let's and go those back. Four to... minutes were excruciating. It felt like a lifetime. <laughs> yeah, four minutes, no points. But then they only went nine guys in a rotation. Jackson didn't play on Friday. But again, Herb played 28, but everyone else, 34 minutes, 37, 39, 38. Josh Richardson played 26 off the bench, but only scored eight points. Hmm. Again, you get down to these last 11 games, and you're relying on your stars to play heavy minutes. It's going to catch up to them a little bit. Um, There's a back-to-back on this West Coast trip. It's Portland and then Golden State, which is never ideal. Um, Not sure if you get Jose back this week. Um, I think maybe you can. Yeah, maybe. I don't even know about Zion yet. Don't don't know what the deal is going to be this week. So, yeah. um, <laughs> I just think you got to get a little bit more out of your bench unit if this yeah. team wants to. I don't. I don't want to say make a run. Just hang. Yeah. Keep themselves in it. Yes, that is too. The big make thing. a run and keep themselves in it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think you got to take baby steps. It's keep yourself in it. See if you can get into the play in. Mm-hmm. Get in the play in. See who you have, and then go from there. 
Yeah. Um, don't want to skip steps in the situation because right now they're not even in the play and it's just so clumped together. Yep. But who knows? Two wins after Thursday. If you beat San Antonio tonight and then the Charlotte Hornets on Thursday, who knows where you could be? You could be sitting at the ninth seat just with two wins yeah. in a row. That's how crazy this Western Conference is. They could be at eighth right now. They could be at 35 and 36 and eighth. Um, I want to say tied with whoever is there, but they'd have the tiebreaker. Is it OKC? Maybe is that the eighth right now? No, but, right now um, Minnesota's at eight at 36 and 37. Oh, it's OK. Gotcha. OKC's in ninth at 35 and 36. So okay, Minnesota's so played two more games um, mm-hmm. than the Pelicans. So that's going to be obviously that'll change things a little bit. Dallas with a, a loss um, that kind of helped the Pelicans. That was the only one that helped the Pelicans last night. Make sure you yeah. follow Jim Eichenhofer on Twitter. He's the one that's keeping track of everything, doing a great mm-hmm. job with tiebreakers. But Jim underscore Eichenhofer, if you need to know about these tiebreakers between the Pelicans and Utah and OKC and Minnesota and Dallas and what games you need to watch each and every night, he's your guy to go to. But Dallas was the only one that lost last night. Yeah. Um, the help. Everyone else was a winner. And, and OKC's not going anywhere. Minnesota, I know Anthony Edwards is going to be out, but they're yeah. going to get Carl Anthony Towns back soon as well. Um, That'll hurt them, I think. They didn't play too good with him earlier this season. (laughs) No. How how many games have you seen with Cat and and Rudy Gobert? I don't think we've seen a lot. Cat got hurt sometime around Thanksgiving. So what, they had like maybe a month or so together. Um, And they weren't playing too hot. And I don't know if it's just because Cat and Gobert weren't working out well together or if the team just hadn't really started to like mesh and gel. But um, I don't know. Conley had a good game for them last night. I want to say he had like 20 something, 20 and 10. Um. But, uh, yeah, I mean, Minnesota just, I don't know, I'm not super, like, afraid of them in the standings. But, um, yeah, I think that, yeah, if we had won that game Friday, you'd be 35 and 36. So we'd be tied at ninth. We'd have that tiebreaker over OKC. And then, what, we win tonight. Hopefully, we'd be 36 and 36. You move up one to eighth. But, like, you win tonight, you're not even going to move up because you messed up a few days ago. <laughs> so right. that's discouraging, too. It's like you win. And then you, you're just still in the same spot. We have a better chance of moving up on our off days than we do on days that we play. But um, we also have a really hard time winning consecutive games. We haven't won consecutive games since a month and a half ago when we ended the 10-game skip. We won three straight. I don't know. I don't really know what's going on. Are they the Atlanta Hawks of the Western <laughs> Conference? Because... I Let's talk about that. Because <laughs> the Hawks... For 25 straight games have either been one game below at 500 or one game above. The last That's time crazy. they were three games over was December 2nd. And the only reason why I know this is also because I live in Atlanta here and everyone's <laughs> freaking out yeah. because they beat the Golden State Warriors on Friday night and mm-hmm. blow a 24 point lead to the Spurs on Sunday How? and lose. Ugh. So it's something with birds right now between the Pelicans <laughs> and the Hawks. Uh, I don't know if everyone's migrating south. It's too cold maybe for them still yeah. as we get spring, but there's something wrong <laughs> with the bird gang, and it's not going well for either side as far as consistency is concerned. Yeah. But, yeah, that that's a huge problem. And, again, we talked about it a couple weeks ago with the schedule lining up that mm-hmm. you string together three or four wins. That could be the difference between you're in the playoffs, in the play-in, or not even in the play-in. And right now, yeah, because of that inconsistency, the Pelicans are on the outside looking in and will have to rely on some help. But again, this is a deal breaker if you lose one of these games tonight yeah. or on Thursday. And, and the Spurs are playing. They're playing their hearts out. Again, they were down 22 at the half. They allowed 83 points to the Hawks the other night and outscored them 65 to 35 mm-hmm. in the second half and came back at one. They have nothing to play for, but the shirts on their, the jerseys on their yeah. backs. Yeah. And that's, what's <laughs> keeping them motivated. And it's just like the Rockets though. Cause the Rockets yeah. didn't only beat us. They beat the Celtics. They beat the Lakers and they it's almost just beat like, the Warriors last what? night. Yeah. <laughs> that's crazy. That's crazy. This just in from Sham Sharania. Uh, there's optimism that the Wolves stars, Carl Anthony Towns and Anthony Edwards could return as soon as Wednesday. That was quick. against the Atlanta Hawks. <laughs> Good luck with that, Atlanta. <laughs> oh, boy. Yep. Town sideline since November 28th with a grade three calf strain. He's on the cusp of a major return. Wow. Breaking news. So, so I, I mean, they need those guys back, especially and not good news for the Pelicans as they are trying to chase um, the Wolves in the standings. Um, oof. Uh, and you That's know, the crazy. worst part about when we do get Zion back, and it sounds crazy to say the worst part about getting Zion back, but the worst part about getting him back is he's going to be on a minute restriction. 
He might even be in playing in bursts. He might play four minute bursts. <laughs> oh, I thought we were not allowed to bring up the B word ever again. It's like, you know, we're going to have them and then we're not really going to have them. You know, like it 20 better 20 Zion minutes is better than none. But I mean, yeah. you can't really get into a rhythm when you're out there for 60 seconds at a time. <laughs> so um, I don't know. I, I'm still curious, you know, what's going to go on. I don't think this update that we're waiting on today or tomorrow or sometime this week, I don't think it's going to say he's going to play this weekend, you know? So I don't know. I don't know what to expect. We don't have hardly any games left and we really really need him if we want to try to you know weasel our way into the play in and weasel our way into the first round yeah. i still rather him have burst or whatever minute restriction is than like mm -hmm. you mentioned nothing because you mm -hmm. need these last whatever how many games he plays he needs to try to get into some sort of rhythm and i know it's hard to get into rhythm when you are on a minute restriction yeah but you don't want him going through that during the playoffs you need him to be mm -hmm. a full go uh, during the play in, and, and trying to get into a best of seven series, whether they get into that is another story. But at the same time, you hope that he comes back for a little bit and, and tries to play and see how that hamstring is, um, because I think they're going to be in contention for the last 11 games. So mm -hmm. for those who think, oh, well, let's just sit Zion out. No need to risk it. No, I think you need to play him again. Yeah. He's he sat out long enough and that's not he a knock did. on him. It's just the amount yeah. of injuries that he's had. You want to see him play. And you want to see how this team can be with him and Ingram mm -hmm. and CJ because that sample size is pretty small for the entire season. You get Jose back. You want to get your full complement of players right. ready to go and peaking at the right time so that maybe when they get into the plan, they're shocking some people. And they're like, oh, wow, this is a team you don't want to see mm -hmm. in the in the playoffs as an eighth seed. Again, that's way down the line, the way they're playing right now. I don't think anyone's <laughs> right. scared of them. But – you never know. I, again, we talked about it last week. I'm waiting for a, a Zion letter like Michael Jordan that just says, I'm back. <laughs> and then all of a sudden he's going to suit up. I know it's not going to happen. I need it. I need it bad. <laughs> they need to get, they need to get help. They need him and Jose Alvarado back and, and hopefully this team's in good shape. Yeah. And I'm looking for some other guys to step up too. Not only will we get them back, but um, you know, I'm looking for Herb to do his things, make some screens, make some cuts, do the Herb at five situation. Like, Let's get creative, you know, but um, and there's certain things like we really have to stop getting in our own way. Um, Friday night, Jonas Valanciunas, awesome first three quarters of the game. Um, fourth quarter, not so much. Uh, so he <laughs> I don't know. A, he didn't get a shot off in the fourth quarter, did he? He got one, one, one single one. That's not enough. It might as well be zero, you know, if it's just one. But it's like I get that sometimes, you know, you throw it down there and him and it doesn't work out. But that's because we don't have anybody who can make an entry pass. So, um. It's it's all the blame is not on him, and I know a lot of people try to blame things on him, but um, no, he had on a everyone, game, and it should have been whatever we were doing, we shouldn't have stopped doing it. And I I feel like I have said that so many times, like why are we going away from what's working? If there's three quarters of evidence that Shangun can't do much with Jonas, why would we stop going to him? You know, we should be going. He should be the first option at this point because right. he can't guard him. So, and I, and I know they started doubling him in that fourth quarter, but you got, oh, yeah. you got to, but you still have to figure out a different way. Figure something out. Someone if else somebody's got to be open. Somebody's yeah. open. It's simple math, and I hate math, but it's very <laughs> simple. <laughs> I hate math too. Somebody's There's a open. reason why I got into this business. So I didn't have to do yeah. any math. <laughs> None. Only math when the paycheck comes, baby. <laughs> yeah, but they gotta do some of the offense. It's just it's just not sure. clicking and oh, there's yeah. a lack of ball movement. Again, it's it's kind of standing around and let's see which guy can start creating. But yeah, you're losing the teams that are moving the basketball so well and cutting and diving and are just has some athletic guys that can just blow right past you. And it's mm -hmm. been a problem for the Pelicans. Who who are you taking seriously on offense besides BI? And CJ and, and Trey mm -hmm. at some times, like there's no one else that you have to really keep honest in that lineup um, until Zion Williamson gets back. So teams are mm -hmm. not really having to be aggressive and they're letting them sit back and, and attempting to bury them on threes. And if not, they're going to clog the paint and wait for the Pelicans to do something. So I think it's on the staff. I think it's it's still on the players too, that they got to get on the same page. Like, okay, if Jonas is, is out of the picture in the fourth quarter, one still find a way to get him involved. But two, mm -hmm. that means others got to get involved and get active and and be the ones that are putting up the points instead of Jonas when they finally decide to trap him. So just adjustments, <sighs> the lack of adjustments that are being made is a little yeah. scary.
for sure. There's a, it was insane to watch people online saying how Willie got out coached, um, especially by a guy like Steven Silas, who uh, it's been seeming like their fan base in Houston, they hate that guy and they're ready for yeah. him to be out of it. So it's, it's wild to, to hear him getting these kudos when it's just like, you know, we know Willie has been able to motivate the guys in the past, but I mean, how much motivation do you need when you're a professional basketball player? You know, why do you need, why do you need the coach to light a fire under you? You should want to go out there and not be embarrassed. So, right. That's a weird hey. situation. Why that Houston, I, again, I don't know. I don't follow Houston as well, but what Steven Siles, I mean, you put any coach in there, they're yeah. going to suck right now. No yeah. offense, but like, this is what it is. What, what are you going to, I mean, again, it's just an excuse for teams that, blame their coaches when it's on the players you don't have any leaders on that team <laughs> they're it's gonna get a high guys. draft pick and they could get significantly better i heard there's there's rumors swirling around that uh james harden wants to go back to houston maybe he misses the strip clubs out there i don't know <laughs> <laughs> strip clubs and and victor Wembayana, and you have yourself <laughs> yeah. a lethal combo in houston Look at that exactly so you imagine if you get victor and then you have jalen green and jabari smith and shangun yeah. And then James Harden decides to come back. <laughs> That's like, wild. Well, we're starting to try to get people out of the division, not bring them back in. That you is got Kyrie coming in Dallas, even though that I'm surprised that has not played out as well as they thought it was going to be. Yeah. And I mean, Luke has been hurt. Um, mm -hmm. Kyrie tweaked his ankle or something last night. I think um, somebody was setting a screen and then Dylan Brooks and Kyrie kind of got, it was kind of like a domino effect. Um, whoever set the screen bumped Dylan and Dylan bumped Kyrie, but also stepped on his foot or his ankle at the same time. So I want to say he left the arena in a boot last night, but they said it was precautionary. Um, and he said they were going to do, they were going to exhaust all options over the next 48 hours so they could minimize, uh, time missed or something. So I don't know if that means he's going to try to play the next game or if he's going to try to only miss one game. But, um, yeah, if they're without Kyrie and Luca, could be bad for them, but, uh, yeah. They still speaking got a couple up on us. Speaking of Dylan Brooks, before we wrap things up, can we just have the NBA declare Grizzlies Warriors round one now, <laughs> no matter seating? I want it to somehow be a play-in game, <laughs> but it can't. because No, I want seven like games of this. I want seven no. games. I don't want oh, one of them. It would drive me insane. It would drive me insane. Great entertainment, but right. I would just, oh, my goodness. And then Dylan, I don't know if, they, um, I don't know if they're um, I don't going to rescind it, but Dylan Brooks picked up his 18th technical last night, so he may be missing their next game on Wednesday. Um, he said, yeah, I got to so, lay off of the technicals. Like you think. <laughs> and, and I was watching one of their fans complaining and they were like, guys can't even celebrate who's playing invisible maracas. I was like, well, you can do invisible maracas, but you can't look at the other team's bench when you do it. Cause they're probably going to call that taunting. And yeah. that's exactly what happened. So he's got a rep now and that's what he wanted. And he's playing right into it. So you got to live with the consequences. Yeah. Well, we'll see what happens here again, a big week for the new Orleans Pelicans tonight, San Antonio Spurs. Not only is it a big game because you are favored heavily in that game, you need to take care of business, but in these mm -hmm. tiebreakers, division record and conference record make a huge difference, especially when yeah. you're facing teams like Dallas. I know Jim mentioned that on his Twitter. And even with the Lakers, when you're chasing these types of teams, if head-to-head -head is not settled, then it's conference record, division record. So got to get tonight. Thursday against Charlotte. We'll be back with you on Friday to recap what hopefully is a 2-0 and start to the week before mm -hmm. that dreadful west coast trip <laughs> that sees them playing three out of four teams that are currently fighting for playoff positioning in the western conference buckle up buckle up these last 11 games i'm afraid um, <laughs> i'm nervous that's part of it yeah i'm nervous too there's uh <laughs> there's no way of going into going we're all good because we're not but um hopefully they learn their lesson from the weekend <laughs> and they take these two games over the next couple of days so Rel, we'll talk to you on friday all right, I will see you there. All right, for Rel Myers, I'm Daniel Salerson. Thanks for listening to Pels and Whistles presented by Bet Online right here on the Believe Network.